At the age of four, I became the seventh generation on my mother's side to live in the town that friendliness built, Lebanon, Oregon, home of the world's largest strawberry shortcake. Very early it was discovered that I had dyslexia and that I saw things differently from most. School was difficult, but in hindsight, this was one of the many blessings that have led and helped me shape my artful existence. I was also lucky to grow up surrounded by beautiful creeks and evergreen wilderness, and within a family that loved to travel, encouraged curiosity, and stressed following one's heart. And my heart has always told me to create. As a seventh generation Lebanite, I wanted to create paintings that reflected the beauty and the strong ties that my family had to the area. While I was thinking about this amazing project and opportunity, it really dawned on me how much I have changed artistically over the years since you know growing up in the town and how much the town at the same time has changed. But it was definitely in that thinking during that time, it was um, thinking about what remained constant. And I wanted to continue to gravitate towards that, what, what the similarities. I, I could really picture my grandfather at sunsets, uh, great-grandfather Fred sitting on his back porch after a grueling day on the farm. I could remember the, you know, I was thinking about the refreshing cool that my grandmother Rusty would feel as a little girl as she splashed around in the Sandy Am, or the trails that my mother Lori tromped through as she gathered up bouquets of purple foxglove and the yellow blossoms of the Oregon grape. Change is important, but uh, for me it was what stays the same, those things that were beautiful then and still retain the same appeal and potential to this day. Uh, I thought that's something that we could all relate to the most, so... What I did was I proposed a series of paintings that were kind of a reflection on the atmosphere and the light. I remember the early morning mists and the thin veil of clouds resting on top of Peterson's Butte. I remember driving around during the summer and looking at the dust being kicked up during hay season that would turn the setting sun like almost on fire in warm hues and glowing contrasts. I wanted my work to reflect the feeling I had as a child, blissfully floating down the Sandy Am River by inner tube or fishing off its banks with the warm summer light reflecting off the subtle ripples and the water-worn stones just beneath its surface. I wanted my paintings to capture the magic and wonder I felt as I discovered the wooded trails and the hills surrounding town. The damp forest air, the feeling of being enveloped in lush green life, and the sweet musk of decomposition as old stumps gave nourishment to saplings, thousands and thousands of ferns. I wanted to capture the dappled light as it it made its way down the path just before leading me to explore over the next bond and over the logs. Early on, I believed that the art project paintings had the potential to be the best paintings I'd ever created. I wanted them to read like chapters, to tell the story of the town that kind of helped shape me, that ignited my lifelong appreciation for both natural and agricultural beauty, for winding waterways and soft rolling fields and gray-blue hills. I've always felt that a painting's job is to feel like a painting, to do the things that only a the paintings can. Paintings, to me, they work best when uh, they're not strictly adhering to the scene at hand, but when they capture the essence of the place, you know, the, the, the essence of the subject. For me, my tools are so limited. It's just oil paint and canvas, really. And using these two simple materials, I've, I, I strive to create an illusion of a third dimension. It's always been my goal to help the illusionary dimension feel real and beckon people to journey in drawing them into a welcome scene that has a certain nostalgic sense, kind of a sense of place that we all know well, but hopefully are seeing again for the first time or seeing anew. My style is developed as a unique hybrid of elements from the artists and paintings I love. When people talk about my art, they use words like impressionistic or painterly, which comes from my years of studying the French impressionists and my deep, (laughs) deep fondness for the early California impressionist painters. I love artwork that feels spontaneous, yet controlled, like a thoughtful acknowledgement to what is being seen and felt. People also use words like relaxing or nostalgic and timeless to describe my paintings. This may indeed reflect my focus to overcome a deep-seated fear of having my art feel dated or trendy. Years ago, I began to ask myself what styles and pieces of art drew me in, and I noticed it wasn't about an era or a movement. The art I like is about light and shadow, about atmosphere, and about conveying the special feeling of being in a certain place at a given time of day. My art has also been described as story-like or illustrative. 
I studied illustration for years, and many of my favorite artists are the classic illustrators, artists such as Maxfield Parrish and N.C. Wyeth, painters who created stunning images that get people excited about the story's potential. My hope for these paintings is that uh, they come across as my thoughtful reaction to what I have been so lucky to have experienced firsthand while growing up surrounded by all of Lebanon's potential and beauty.